this tutorial, we'll have a look at the GPTune plugin inside DaVinci Resolve. Now, I've already got a project open here and I've added a few GoPro clips into the timeline. I'm on the color tab, so let's have a quick look at our color management settings. Right now, we've started off with a non-color managed workflow with an output to Rec. 709. This is usually the default setting for most projects. So let's add the GPTune plugin inside this particular node. Now, having a look at the parameters here, we've got the exposure correction setting where we can adjust our exposure values in stops from minus 10 to plus 10. We have the curve preset, which allows us to change the color management settings. Uh, so we can choose Protune flat, GP log, natural, or even our own custom log parameters. If we choose custom log, we can adjust the log base value and the offset value if we're using GoPro Labs firmware. In this case, we're using GP log. The next setting below that, we've got the camera model and the camera color. Now, when we're using GP log, the camera model is set to generic and it's disabled. If we were to go across and choose Protune flat as an example, we could actually choose a different camera model. So in this case, if we wanted to choose the Hero 13. Now, in our case, we're using GP log, so let's go back to GP log and we don't need to select the camera model here. The next option here is the camera color. Now, we have a number of different option settings. We've got the custom WRGB, which I'll come to in a second. We've got Rec. 709, which is a Rec. 709 based color space. We have Rec. 2020, if you're using GoPro Labs. And we have Native, which is a native color space for the respective camera. In this case, if it's the Hero 13, that would be the case there. In this situation, because we shot using GP log, uh, we'll use the wide camera color. Now, if we were to actually use a custom WRGB, uh, we'd have the option to select our custom red and blue gain values, green always being at one. And if you want to fine tune your white balance values or you're using a custom white balance, this is the place to adjust it. In our case, we'll go back to wide. Lastly, you've got some timeline color space settings. So you've got the timeline gamma and the timeline color space. So we'll leave these as Rec. 709. Under advanced settings, we have a few different options. So we have a lighting preset, which is daylight or tungsten. You also have a highlight roll off option, which lets you adjust the highlights to roll them off a lot smoother. You've got the gamut mapping, which allows you to map the gamut down to a lower color space. You have desaturate, which allows you to reduce the saturation down to 85%. And lastly, you've got clamp negatives, which clamps any negative values. All right, so this particular clip was shot using GP log, and we've already selected GP log, but you can see it's quite dark. And the reason behind that is usually a lot of GoPro footage tends to be underexposed. So we, we really do need to correct that exposure in post. And so normally we can adjust by one stop, anywhere between one to two stops. And if we have a look here, that looks fine. If we wanted to, we could even go up to one and a half stops. And using a non-color managed workflow, we can then even adjust the highlight roll-off to make those highlight roll-offs a lot smoother rather than the harsh clipping points that, that are there right now. Just as well, we could even do gamut mapping and desaturation for additional creative controls. Now that we've had a look at a non-color managed workflow, let's move across to a DaVinci YRGB color managed workflow. Now, because this particular project requires an input transform, we need to make some adjustments here. Now, in our case, let's choose HDR. 
then deselect automatic color management. And we can see that the color processing mode is set to Rec 2020 Intermediate. But we also need to do another adjustment here. So we go into Custom, and under Input DRT, we need to select None. And the reason behind that is if we don't disable the Input DRT, DaVinci Resolve will take the input and perform tone mapping to match a 1000 nit working color space. Okay, now that we've done that, save it and let's go into our clip settings. The first thing we need to do is actually change our input color space to same as timeline, which then allows us to use the GP Tune plugin as the input transform. Now, with this particular setting, because we're using DaVinci Intermediate with a Rec 2020 color space, we need to adjust that accordingly in our GP Tune plugin settings. So if we go across to DaVinci Wide Gamut, you can see that the timeline gamma has been changed to DaVinci Intermediate. In our case, because it's not Wide Gamut, it's actually Rec 2020, we need to adjust that color space to Rec 2020. And then we can disable our gamut mapping and desaturation settings as required. Okay, so we've had a look at that clip. Let's move across to another clip. Now, let's change our project settings to ASIS. If we move across into ASIS CCT and 1.3, let's change our output transform to Rec 709 and leave our input transform as none. So this clip looks a bit strange, and the reason behind that is we need to actually add the GP Tune plugin in here as well. Now, we select GP Log here as well, do a two-stop or one-and-a-half-stop exposure adjustment, and change our color space to ASIS AP0, and our timeline gamma to ASIS CCT. Now, for argument's sake, let's say we had a clip that was shot using Protune Flat with a native white balance, or even a custom white balance. So we take a similar approach here. We adjust our timeline gamma to match the project settings. And you'll notice that it's automatically changed to ASIS AP0. We do a exposure adjustment. And let's say we don't quite like the colors, so we can change our white balance to a custom white balance. Give it a bit of a warmer look. So there you go. That was a quick overview of the GP Tune plugin inside DaVinci Resolve.